Good afternoon. Today is Tuesday, July 2nd, 2022, 2 p.m. We're at the Ocean Shores Library, and this is a meeting of the Ocean Shores Planning Commission. Uh, we'll start with the roll call. Owen Ward here. Ryan Backman. Not present. Elder Dorman. No, he is excused and Richard Paul. So here. So I haven't heard from Brian. Should we do a motion to excuse him or give him a few minutes? We'll give him a few minutes. All right, we will do that. Okay, the first thing we need is a motion to approve the meeting agenda. So second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So that was Thorn and, uh, uh, and Dan. And Dan, yep. All right, do we have a motion to approve the minutes from the meeting held on the 28th of June? I move to approve those minutes. I, I, we need one correction. It's just a small one down at the bottom adjournment. <coughs> so, uh, it's adjourned by Chair Bricker. Oh, okay. You can make that adjustment. So. All right. So, circuit, will you make? Okay. All in favor? Aye. All right. All right. So, that, that was that was Wills <coughs> and Dan. Second. Mm -hmm. All right. So, public comments. We do not have any written public comments, I believe. No. Okay. Uh, Andy had to. The... And we have comments from the floor. Andy? Yes, I just want to say that the public comment on Friday was good enough to get good answers yesterday at the council meeting. And thank you for the answers. They were meticulous and accurate. And that will provide good comment for citizen meetings when you discuss issues like this. And this is good for everybody because it provides better city government when you follow the protocol and things are done properly. So I just want to thank you for the results. Thank you. John Williams, do you have a public comment? Uh, no, I don't. Thank you very much. I'm listening. Thank you. I do not believe we have any old business to cover. Um, the only thing I will cover under old business, as I said before the meeting adjourned, um, the mayor has asked me that I bring our, our discussion and resolution on food trucks forward for the next city council meeting and i will prepare that transmittal this afternoon or tomorrow just as we agreed very simple like we passed the motion we agreed to do so that'll go out this week to the mayor very short meeting today two two issues um hopefully won't take very long the first thing is planning commission member discipline verbiage this has come up based on um dan working to review and update the handbook, I believe that's how it came up. Correct. So I will briefly lead it off, then I'm going to ask Dan to sort of elucidate a little bit more on what we're talking about. Basically, it's when a fellow commissioner has done something or no, I guess the best way has done something such to the fact that the commission should consider some sort of discipline to include recommendation of removal from the planning commission. Is that the best summary? It's good. So Dan, if you want to sort of elucidate a little bit on what we're talking about. Well, last fall was a terrible time for some of us. <clears throat> Richard and I both were taking it heavily from a fellow commissioner and uh, it was not documented well and finally I, took one of the emails, I, I sent it to the mayor, or copied the mayor on it, on my response. And it, it, it was abusive. And there's there, there's no way to get a planning commissioner off if they're, if they're abusive. I think there should be. It may never happen again, but there's got to be an out. If the mayor can put somebody on, you know, they'll take them off. But there ought to be documented what the abuse was. I mean, you, some of these emails Nasty. So what I would like to do is some sort of discussion. What we really need to come up with is sort of a process by which we would 
removed or if there is any, and I struggled all week to figure out what the lesser discipline, and there really isn't one. It's really, we're talking removal. So I want to. I'm just wondering, and I completely understand what you're saying, and, and I'm with you, but I wonder if something is sent, which I assume this was, maybe it wasn't, by a private email to another person, I'm not sure you can discipline someone based on a private email um, on a public committee. I mean, if it was said publicly, I, I think I, I, in my case, I think I have the right to do that. He attacked me as, as the chair of the planning commission. So I have the right to send that on. I'm not saying you don't have a right to send it on. And when I say you any person yeah. in that, that situation, I, I'm just wondering if it's a personal email, if it can be used for discipline in a public meeting. Well, I, it was all, I don't know. I'm asking the question. Oh, good. I, it was all about planning commission stuff. So I don't think that's real private uh, myself, but um, <coughs> any discussion? Um, um, Richard, you had. So, so uh, as, as Dan indicated, I was also the brunt of, of some of that vitriol. Uh, uh, and in my case, it all happened on telephone conversations. And on at least three occasions, uh, that person said, are you intentionally trying to sabotage the planning commission? And I found that really, really upsetting and offensive uh, because I think that we all do a fabulous job. I know how many hours I put in to try to present. Um, uh, and so so I agree with, with, with Dan, I think that some uh, some form of recourse needs to be codified in our commission handbook. Um, and to that end, I talked to my wife a little bit, who was the department head in the psychology department at a, at a university, and she was also the chair of the uh, uh, Northwest uh, Psychology Association. Um, uh, so she has some background in that kind of thing, and, and we had a fairly lengthy discussion. And she uh, made me aware of a legal term called ad hominem. Uh, and in general, ad hominem is an attack on a person as opposed to a discussion of an opposing viewpoint. And so this is all background to say that my suggestion is, is if any commissioner is feeling personally attacked, that they communicate that to you uh, and if you happen to be the source of the attack, and I, I'm thinking about military situations where sometimes the commanding officer was the problem, uh, or the commanding, the, the, the supervising sergeant was the problem, you know, then the next course would be, the next step would be the mayor. Um, and if that offended uh, a commissioner uh, can give some background, some credible background to you or to John, uh, that then you and John feel uh, is grounds for dismissal. Um, I think that as the mayor, as Dan said, the mayor appoints us, so the mayor ought to be able to fire us. Uh, and the question is, he appoints us with council approval, but would he need council approval to fire a commissioner? And and I think that you know that's that's a discussion that you can have with John. And John may want to have with the lawyer, uh, um, but in my in my mind, that ad hominem attack is is ample grounds uh, if it's if it's kind of a, a trend, a repeated thing. And we're not talking about I disagree with your opinion. The thing that I love about this type of an environment is as we discuss opposing opinions, it it causes more stuff to come out. Uh, which makes for a better resolution. Uh, but what I'm talking about is, is a personal attack as happened to Dan. Happened to me. Oh. I am most certainly not disagreeing at all. I'm just saying we need to think through or touch base with the attorney to make sure the, the way we write it is enforceable and that it's not going to come back and bite us. 
And I, I totally agree. And I think there's, as I'm listening to this discussion, I'll just see your point. I think that there's two different issues. There is the perception of a personal attack during a meeting, which is clear. Right. No argument. These are recorded minutes kept. Then there is discussion of a personal attack upon a commissioner by another commissioner that is not done in the public setting. And that's where we would need some legal guidance or figure exactly. out what we can do with that, correct? And, and it's a discussion we can have with city lawyer and in the mayor and the city. Yeah, because every time we what like people want to add from the volunteer standpoint of the board, like that kind of subject, it's all it gets slippery because it's all very subjective. Just because you find it um, yeah, rude definitely. or misleading or whatever, that person may say, "Well, that wasn't my intention," and they're they're where you left. Like, and some people get offended at everything. Yeah, so it's, some it's really. Uh, Do any of the boards have anything? Uh, no, nothing. Then. Um, the uh, library board, or excuse me, not library board, the radio board has like a grievance process, but even that has proven ineffective and had to be elevated all the way to city staff to help navigate it. So it's it's really like a case by case and you're all volunteers. So you can, this mayor or whomever can navigate through it in that capacity, but I don't think putting something in your handbook other than like everyone will treat each other with respect is really going to get you anywhere. Okay. In, in truth, not that you should be subjected to any of that behavior or anything like that, but there's so many pieces past that point that have to be evaluated by HR and our administration, the mayor, so far, like you kind of be wasting time putting anything in there other than you know, be considerable to one another. Could you leave it open and that we expect respect paid towards each other? Um, and if, if that is uh, deemed disrespectful by the president or the chair, no matter who says it, um, it may be passed on to the mayor. Just so I think that kind of gives a warning without giving a clout that we really don't have. And I think I'm trying to sort of walk through what you just said. And I've been down this road with EO and other issues, and I know everything that goes into that. So I, I for one, think first a discussion about conduct and respect is well wanted. And it's also the thing that we need to talk about and maybe bring it up for a vote next week is, do we want to allow the planning commission to based upon a planning commission members comments or report, vote to recommend removal to the mayor? So we could put that as sort of the, the teeth into it that any planning commissioner can come to a planning commission and say, I believe this conduct was offensive. And then Essentially a vote of no confidence. Basically a vote of no confidence. What we would have to do then, and I've talked briefly about this, is then do we do simple majority, super majority, or 100% um, other than the offending party? So those are the three areas we would kind of look at. Just to make it not it such that- takes away the subjectivity of it. That's what it is. So, can you can the planning commission send to the mayor a recommendation for removal on a simple majority? Yeah, go ahead. Well, <clears throat> I think we also have to consider, you know, somebody doesn't they make an attack. Okay, say this person makes an attack on on me, and I brought it to the to the planning commission. In all in in the companies I work for, you got a step process. Yeah. So you, so you have to give them a warning and you have to give them a second warning. And at the time you're gone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think we'd have to do something like that. Yeah. And I'm, I'm up for that. And if you, and I'm not sure we have to go quite as far because this isn't employment. 
Yeah, so we're not subject to all of the employment law in doing this. This is strictly, you know, we volunteered, the mayor appointed, mayor recommended our appointment, we had a consent from the council. So it's a, a little simpler because yeah. nobody's getting paid, but it's not that simple. Yeah, I think we need to give one warning because no. somebody must might not think they're being obnoxious. Or... And my experience in doing this in the past is one option is to say basically the offended commissioner come to the chairperson, the chairperson come discuss it one on one with the um, purported offending person as sort of the first step. And then if it continues, then it can come to the entire commission. I mean, that's an option. I, I, I like what you just said, that, that the offended commissioner uh, brings to the chair uh, and the chair can talk to, to the two parties involved. Uh, um, uh, and perhaps that's enough to defuse it. And then if, if, if the activity continues, then I like Dan's suggestion that, that it then goes to a consensus vote. And I like consensus over supermajority uh, um, uh, because depending on, on the, 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 the uh, factors involved, uh, it's conceivable that not all of the commissioners would, commissioners would perceive the same offense uh, there was one meeting I can think of in particular um, uh, where Sarah had relayed relayed uh, some some information from the mayor, uh, and then a commissioner got on their soapbox and just took over the meeting and and refused to relinquish the the the, 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 the what's the right word they, they would not shut up. Uh, um, uh, and and um, I found that whole that whole scenario pretty offensive, but not everybody may have. So I'm stumbling on along to say that 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 I think between what you said and what Dan said, I, I think that we can 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 write some guidelines. <clears throat> and as Sarah's indicated, it may not stand up in a court, but we're not employees, and so it's not going to go to court. Uh, and, and it basically comes down to, to if, if you and a consensus of commissioners think that, that Schmidlap should get the door uh, and you get the mayor's agreement, then Schmidlap should get the door. And it's, I think that if we want to sort of do that as the end, it sort of ends at a recommendation from the commission to the mayor. Then it's up to the mayor to figure out if he has to go back to council or not. And, Sort of look into all of that. For us, it's again keeping in our in our area of influence. It's we as a majority of the planning commission believe that the behavior of one of our own is such that we recommend removal for the good of the commission. And, and I, I I like that. And so then my question is 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 that enough information? Could you write something up based on what we just discussed and present it? At the next uh, uh, meeting, uh, our, our Gary, you've had you had uh, some 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 uh, uh, bureaucratic experience in this arena. Uh, uh, would you be willing to kind of draft up what we just discussed and bring it? Yeah, I could. It's up to you, Dan. I can do a first draft, or you can do a first draft. All right. You know, I didn't like my writing. You prefer me to write. I don't. What I will do though is with. with if, unless anybody says no, I would like to send it to Dan because he's going to work France with a handbook for a read before it comes back to the commission. Yeah, I just think we've got to keep it simple. Oh, I want it, I want it like three sentences. Yeah. And if you're going to put chair, make sure that if you have, a, you have something in there that if it's about the chair, that you go to the vice chair. Well, that's a good idea. Because yeah, I I'm telling you, <laughs> it happens, and it's like, well, I went to so and so, and yeah. he didn't do anything about it. So, yeah. so I'll, yeah, let me think about it. Very this. clear that it's against the chair. Yeah. And I like what you just said about about ultimately it goes to the mayor, and it's it's, it's the mayor's decision. The mayor may just say, work it out. Yeah. With us, it's all we can do is recommend. Yeah. We have very little authority in this in this group, but I think it's enough to get forward, please. I, I missed all the excitement of this. It's occurred it's probably a week before I joined. No, it was before I joined. So. Oh, okay. Sure.
titillating, it sounds like. <laughs> you know, it's probably never going to happen again. But I, I we need to lean heavily on, on the mayor to, as he can fire us, he can fire us basically. And with, if, if necessary for the council to concur, that's fine. But I lean heavily on the mayor's ability to say, be it. Yeah. And based on us, and so I'll, I will put something together for next week and send it. Dan and I will pass copies to some of my three writers. So. Any other discussion on this? The next item is something that the mayor talked to me, and I've been doing some research. And this is truly a brainstorming session um, among us to talk about the way forward. The mayor called it a livable city initiative, which I've done a bunch of read a bunch of definitions of what a livable city is, and there many most of them are so esoteric they mean nothing. <laughs> So I, I think the mayor is looking for a little more focus in the areas he sort of talked about were um, briefly he mentioned, you know, biking, walking, um, and I thorn brought in affordable housing, which definitely needs to be in there. Uh, so the definition, definition of a, a livable city, there's tons of them, and I will bring something next week in a document. I just don't want to do that. Sort of a city that the residents enjoy living in and have the ability to have a good quality of life. Vancouver, British Columbia is always cited as the most livable city in the world. But on a large city, that's bike paths, parks, um, healthcare, and all that sort of stuff. So I think we need to sort of narrow this scope a little bit, but I also think there's some value elements. I would like to see us revisit sidewalks, because I'm sure most of you remember the elaborate sidewalk design that nobody liked, and it was going to take up parking spaces. Um, we we're going to lose, I don't remember how many parking spaces we we're going to lose here. Thank you. But, you know, when I drive down the road and I, I see the city right away, it seems to me like there should be enough room to just build a sidewalk straight down uh, Point Brown without taking out parking right. spaces. Yeah, go ahead. I think what we need to do is start with the common plan. Exactly. I was going to go there next because we would we address most of these things. Right. So my thought was we use this and I don't know if we'll keep calling it the Livable Cities Initiative, but it's a good buzzword to go through the comprehensive plan and there are dozens of goals and initiatives that would dovetail very nicely in this all right sidewalks are one and sidewalks are back on the city council agenda on how to solve that issue and again i see this more of a starting off as sort of a strategic document like the comp plan but sort of moving it more towards implementation of the comprehensive plan. Picking some things out of the comprehensive plan to put into the initiative, sidewalks, uh, better marked biking, safer biking, which has now become a big issue in the city with all the e-bikes. Um, lots of things can come back into this again. So maybe we go through the comprehensive plan and pick a dozen of them, but we're not going to sit there and draw where the sidewalks should go, but we could say things like the Planning Commission on the Liberal Cities Initiative recommends a simplified sidewalk plan for Point Brown or something like that. Just to sort of give the city staff and the mayor a little sort of nudge in this. And I've got some other stuff after, go ahead. So, so I may be too close to the weeds right now, but but I have two ideas that I would like to see advanced. Uh, and one of them is there's no place to dump yard waste besides driving to Montesano. Okay. And, and uh, um, I think that, that it's worth the city exploring a way to handle compostable yard waste and, and branches and, and, and limbs that are burnable yard waste. And, and uh, 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 so I don't again. You know, I don't know if that's too far in the weeds. But the other idea that I have is is we're finally starting to slowly inch forward on the way that ditch, and for a couple of years 
for about four years. I know what anyway, for a couple of years, I have thought that that whole Oyhut Ditch area uh, uh, on the east side of Point Brown, that once they get the ditch cleaned out, that that could be turned into virtually a mile long part of the break around Arrow Lumber. Uh, um, and it would be like the, the is, it, is it Austin's River Walk, the, 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 you know, whatever the, the uh, uh, a long uh, uh, part with kind of a, a, a creek running down the middle of it that's got some type of water in it and sometimes not, uh, and with, with planters and, <coughs> and, and benches, uh, and it would be a great place to put a sidewalk uh, uh, because there's no impact on traffic. Uh, so those are those are two specific ideas that I would like to have advanced. So, so what I'm going to sort of propose is I will put together some sort of an outline of what areas we're looking at, but I would like uh, planning commissioners to come forward with just those type of ideas that you have and please tie them to the comprehensive plan goals and objectives. Right. Because we need to start using that and I'm constantly forgetting. I mean, everything I go to the city council with, we should be talking about how this fits with a comprehensive plan. And I'm just not doing that myself. And I think we all need to sort of we discipline ourselves because I just opened it last night again and I was sitting through a three hour city council meeting and started reading the comprehensive plan a little bit again. We put stuff. years into that. I know. So I view this at the mayor asking us to do this to sort of working on operationalizing it. The other thing I would ask you to think about, and this gets to writing the, uh, the commission handbook and the public meetings, is I would love to get this in a public involvement, sort of like Jim Hummer's beautification committee at a sub planning commission level, if that's possible and legal. I don't know, Jim, the beautification committee isn't a city activity, right? No. So if a planning commissioner wanted to lead a public discussion about um, walking, hiking trails or whatever you wanted, would that have to be considered a public meeting or is there a way to do that outside the public meeting block? I don't know. I would love to sort of see if there's a way to do working groups or something like that in the planning commission where somebody could volunteer and then we could get citizens to volunteer to bring ideas to this working group to then bring them to the planning commission. We have some, having not been here long enough, I don't know if I'm stepping on a grenade by suggesting that, or do you have any thoughts about a, a way to get public involvement short of public comments out of planning commission? The, the only difficulty I see is, is where to hold it. We hold it at the convention center, there's a significant cost involved. Uh, and if it was as large a meeting as you're describing, maybe too big for this room, I don't know what the details are for using the Lions Club. Is that uh, is there a fee for using the Lions Club for this type, type of a, there's no fee or you don't know? No, not that I, there's no fee from the last time I know. I, I just, I wanted some discussion on, is there a way, because this would be a beautiful way to get the public involved in making the city better and to educate on the comprehensive plan. That's sort of what I'm looking at, two for one on this. And poor Marshall's going to be the end of all of this because we're going to come up with these great ideas. And Marshall's just going to be, oh my gosh, how are we going to do any of this? But, so you're, you're basically talking then about a uh, kind of like a town hall meeting yeah. to discuss city beautification. Well, a, a working group. I just use Jim Hummer's group because it's well known, the beautification committee. Why not city chats? Having a city chat talk. You have like 40, 50, 60 people go to those. Yeah, we could do that. that and that the only reason I say city chat, and I mean it wouldn't be for one or two, three months because it's all budget stuff now, but um those are for education of the community on a different levels. And the, the thing about that versus like the meetings that you have is that those are after semi after working hours where a lot more people in this community are able to go. And that is a you know, free conversation, people ask questions, you can provide documents, you can provide screen shares, you can do all of that and it's advertised as such. And then we typically do a overview of the, Marshall was at one for the planning department 
And we did this really beautiful overview of, of his presentation and it, and then it reached even more people in that capacity. So um, that's, that's a, a great way to think about getting some public involvement. So as I, and I'm gonna try, I'll get with the mayor in the next few weeks to discuss sort of what we're doing, but bringing forward ideas to the next meeting and I'll sort of do an outline. And then if we can sort of place them into categories, and then make those sort of a city chat topic. So hike, walking and biking can be one, and then that will be a bunch of stuff. I really do think in the comprehensive plan, I'll get with the amendment, I don't know, we've got to address affordable housing. Whether or not that's too big for us to deal with, but there may be simple solutions like phone suggest, maybe you change this. Some simple stuff we can do in the affordable housing that we can recommend to the mayor. So that's sort of all of the things we could bring into the livable cities and see the livable cities plan as a way to begin to implement the comprehensive plan. I want to go ahead. I, I just don't think we as a planning commission can do anything about affordable housing. Oh. I mean, that's, I, I think that's just out of our jurisdiction. Oh, we could that's go ahead and I, I don't recommend we ask the city for any money at all for this. I think that's foolish. There's a thing of making housing affordable by charging taxpayers for it, but we can change, so expand some zoning options, but the people who build houses take care of that issue. I mean, that it's, it's for discussion, as one of the things you mentioned is the additional dwelling units. Yeah, they do ADUs right now, they're perfectly legal, but you can only rent it to your cousin. That doesn't make any sense. So there's, there's things we could do, but that's a very limited piece. I totally agree. Every time I read that, the comprehensive plan, I scratch my head on what, what can we do. So there may be little things we can do. Many cities address healthcare. There's nothing in the planning commission we can do on health. That's way above us. So we want to sort of look at the, liv the livable city initiative as a, um, as I said, operationalizing the comprehensive plan, coming up with some recommended um, actions to make it. Sidewalks, I mean, I could go to the, let's make the beach approaches accessible year round. Whether or not you know it, there's most of the pedestrian beach access is going to water for about three to four months. You can't get on the beach unless you drive on most of them. So little things like that, that benefit the community because there's lots of people that try to go on butterfly. And I see these people tracing through deep, deep water or whatever. Little things we could do to help this. I'm sure it is, but I, I just think this is another way to sort of package it. And then like you said, bring it to the city chat, get some public input on it with more ideas and like tweaking the ideas. You know, my pet peeve is we're gonna to have to sit down soon with the chief of police and talk about bicycle safety because I've seen way too many near misses on Ocean Shore Boulevard with everybody riding an e-bike now. Oh, <clears throat> the west side of the city has bike paths. Absolutely. The east side doesn't. I agree. You go down Duck Lake Drive and all the bikes down there, and it's dangerous. Yep. It's dangerous to even walk on Duck Lake Drive. Well, yeah, there's a lot of people do it. So, I mean, the solutions having done this before are is you, you, you put signage for bike paths. You get people on the, on the west side, you get people off of Oak Shores Boulevard onto the two sand dunes. And then reduce the speed right in front of my house where there is no sand. Little things. Duck Lake Road, you know, basically put a sign if you want that says no bicycles. But then here's where the citizens are going to have input. You direct them to where I ride my bike. I don't ride on Duck Lake. I take all the Bayfront roads. But I got to get on Duck Lake for three blocks and get back on again. So if you do signage that says, you know, bike path or bike route one, bike route two, you're not going to keep them off of those routes. I mean, I ride at six in the morning, so I don't see many people. But I personally, I don't like riding on Duck Lake Road. I ride Bay Road instead. And but the issue be... is then if you make that a designated bike path, then the citizens are going to have a bike path in that front yard. Richard, go ahead. So that's specifically what you're talking about. We talked about in the comp plan. And one of the proposals that I'd like to, to rejuvenate is that we published a map that said these are the alternate bike paths to stay off of Duck Lake. And, and my wife and I ride 
not Duck Lake, but the, you know, the side street, <coughs> but there's a block or two where there's no choice except that Duck yeah. Lake. But you can do more, you can do signage, you can create right. bike routes. Many cities create a bike route. You can do that. You can cover the ditches with culverts and pave that short stretch again. People can some somewhere go so that, and, 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 and as we do this, I just we just need to drop the speed limit in that little piece because where 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 San Diego comes back on Ocean Shores Boulevard going south, that stop sign every day. Because you come around a corner and somebody or someone's doing 50 instead of the speed limit and this 11 yellow bikes in the lane. So I'm just waiting for the staff. And so speed limits, signage, maps, all, but that's just one initiative. That's what I'm talking about, what we're sort of doing. And then always tie it to the comprehensive plan. Ellen. I would like to also see us in conjunction with that, each take a small area of the city and go walk a bike ride because. Remember when we walk downtown for the signage, if you go out with the intention of really looking at the area, it's amazing what you can see. For example, Duck Lake needs a bike path, but there is no room because the ditch is right at the road. But you learn a lot by being assigned a small area to go and investigate and um, it's almost all it turns out like the signage, right? We were astounded at what we saw. And that's, a, that's something definitely we, we can talk about next week and take care of the city. So, so a related, but a little bit off subject, and I said this before, uh, there is a, a, a large disparity between the current land use map and the land use designations in chapter three. Uh, and that's a loop that I think we need to close because the land use map designations are not defined in the comprehensive plan. And, and, and there's, there's two or three that are kind of defined uh, and it would not take very much editing uh, uh, to tie the kind of loose definitions that are associated maybe with the land use designations uh, and, and, and fix chapter three so that when you, I know you don't even remember what the designations on the land use map are anymore without pulling up the map, uh, but it doesn't matter because, you know, what is the downtown area? What, what is the, the South End Development area? Um, and the, the South End Development area is not identified in my memory uh, in, in chapter three. So anyway, I'd, I'd like to see chapter three edited to bring it in alignment with the land use map. So, yeah. so what I'm going to volunteer is my third writing assignment this week is to sort of put categories together. And then I want people at the next meeting to bring sort of ideas and we'll start talking about bidding them into the general categories that I will put out there. So if, if you put those categories together, I'm assuming you will email them to each of us so that we can come prepared for the next meeting. Well, we'll, we'll be in the minutes and we'll try. I'm going to publish this part of the minutes. And so that'll give you I'll get you the minutes earlier this week. So uh, you'll have a week. We'll try to get the minutes published a week from today. Uh, I mean, the agenda. Yeah. We'll get the agenda. So the easiest way for me to do it, I can put it out there before the agenda, but it'll be part of the agenda. It'll be an attachment to the agenda. But I can also email it to everybody as soon as I'm done. That's what we do. I like as much lead time as I can get because sometimes I just have to let it cook in the, in the back burner for a day or two before I do start to pop. But I, I think, you know, as I was, Sitting last night thinking is, is we sort of are, have taken on a lot of the tactical right now issues, you know, tents, uh, transit housing, transit, you know, transit lodging, food trucks. I'd really like to see us as a group get a little more back into the strategic operational and comprehensive plan and then big idea and things that then the mayor can come back and see, okay, these are things. And again, we won't get it into this budget cycle because right. I'm learning what the budget cycle is. So we're talking next year, unless there is some things that are in the budget that can sort of be squeezed into these ideas. So based on what the mayor told me, based on um, you know reading the comprehensive plan, and I'll read it one more time. Again, it's looking at the things you'd like to see happen how it ties to the comprehensive plan and anything we do on the living 
city initiative, livable city initiative will be tied to a comprehensive plan, goal and objective as a way to sort of operational, make that comprehensive plan more operational in view. And I know they're all in there. As soon as I would start taking them, I could find them all. But this is just another way to sort of pull out the top 15, top 20, and say, here you go, Mayor. You know, and maybe they'll get there in time for the budget, maybe they won't. That's not the critical thing. The critical thing is to get them out there as things. And through city chat, it's a great idea to get them out into the public. Are law enforcement issues tied to the call No. There may be some left. There may be, absolutely. There's lots of stuff in there. Ellen. You know, when we were doing the comm plan, we talked extensively about um, the downtown corridor and what we would like to see. That will be one of the areas, definitely. Yes, I, I would like that to come to the forefront because how our city is viewed when people first come into town, first impressions are everything. If at the city council meeting last night, that was actually brought up. Somebody said maybe we need to, the city needs to cough up grants for some of these business owners that can't afford to do an upgrade to the facade. Who knows? Or we help them find other things under some of the programs that were out there. But I definitely want that to be one of the areas because I have my own budget. Was that we all have our own issues. You know, get the construction equipment out, make it look prettier. All that sort of stuff needs to go into making the downs, the, the downtown corridor, and then defining the downtown corridor. I mean, how far does it go? So, so on that idea, uh, we have talked a lot about uh, um, uh, pyramid zoning in the in the commercial zones. And as it is now, if you look at if you read the descriptions for B1 and B2, uh, out the only the only major difference between B1 and B2 is that B2 is intended for more outdoorsy types of activities. Uh, and other than that, they both have taverns, they both have cocktail lounges, they both have hotels and and, and, and drug stores and banks. Uh, and you know, and if we're going to tackle that, do we want to narrow the scope of, a, of permitted uses uh, so that there's a bigger distinction between B1 and B2? And I'm not suggesting, I'm only asking the question, is that something we want to think about? I think as we talk the business district, that is one of the topics that'll come up for consideration for us to make a recommendation. As we talk about the business director, business district part of the livable city, that is something we definitely can discuss as a group and take a vote and make a decision on, on a recommendation. But I mean, I, right, you know, right now, I, I, I think I'm gonna throw affordable housing in there. There's not much we can do. I'm definitely gonna put downtown business district. I'm gonna put walking, I'm gonna put biking. And then I've got to go through and there's some other things in the comprehensive plan. If you have anything to just send me an email because you're the most familiar with the comp plan. Um, and I'll go through it one more time to kind of pull things out. I mean, the other thing that I hear from just because of where I live and from other people is the, um, the Interdune Trail as a combined firefighting trail, you know, sort of the trail that's just west of the Wax Merlin. So we just improved that one bulldozer blade wide for hiking mountain biking and use it as a fire, so firefighting activity. And I know all the issues associated with that, but that's something that you could definitely bring up as a benefit because there are people walking the dunes all the time. I'm one of them. And there's also a fire issue. Right now, <laughs> the Humvees were all over the dunes right before the fourth, crashing around out there and they almost got stuck in the council. Um, so there's, there's lots of things we could put in there as recommendations and then sort of how far we flush them out, we can work out. But at some point we bring it to a level of clarity that it can get turned over to city staff or turn over to the mayor and the mayor and council decide if they want to turn it over to city staff for them to take on. And some of these are on the budget priorities already. So, oh, the fourth thing in livable cities is a sense of community. And um, it, this actually goes all the way back to the food truck initiative and uh, um, one of the, one of the council members talking about she'd love to have once a month Thursday evening music and food trucks. Well, convention center. So if this is something we want to recommend as a livable city sense of community, we can come back and say the government the, the city should look at low cost funding, music, and encouraging food trucks to come, 
second Tuesday of the month to the convention. Th those are the sort of things that go into the studies. I think that could flush out just how viable food trucks are in this community. Because mm -hmm. I suspect if it's a, a one day only, it would be mainly uh, supplied by local restaurants mm -hmm. because I don't think somebody's going to drive from Olympia for a three or four hour food truck. Set. Yeah, but I mean, that's just one of the things they talked about. Oh, yeah, I think so. I'd love to see a monthly two day Thursday evening event with music and the ability to have food vendors. And as we know, the only place you could legally do that on city property and according to Great Harbor. There's a convention center right now. So, I mean, and every time I drive by, I see that bandstand, that tent down, not being used. It's a wonderful opportunity that we could recommend to the mayor. So that'll sort of be the fourth thing, you know, sense of community, community activities. It's quite simple to close off that particular street, too. Yeah, there's lots of things you could do. And there's plenty of parking in back, yeah. so it's not going to hurt the business. They're going to close it off a hot while and tear it up. They do every year, so. So um, basically, all I'm asking is bring your specific or general initiatives. I will send everybody sort of the three to five categories we're going to kind of try to work in. And I'm going to go back through one more time the comprehensive plan and um, sort of tie everything to a goal or objective of the comprehensive plan. Anything further on sort of what I talked to the mayor briefly about the Little Cities? I couldn't see if there was anything, but. I, I think that you have covered a lot of ground in the short time. Yeah, and I have a habit of talking fast, so I'll do that. So, um, any, I'm going to go through reports. Dan, anything to report? <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm going to try and get it. Um, uh, mainly done by time next week. I won't present anything, but probably the following one. Perfect. I got to get to Richard first. And I, I've had some issues I had to deal with, so I haven't worked on it too long. That's fine. Anyone anything to report? No. Um, our report that I was at the city council meeting last night, and I was the second or third to last on the agenda, and they we did go through transit lodging one more time, and I think we agreed it's ready for an agenda bill, right? Sarah, I think we agreed that transit lodging is ready for. So they're taking it as a discussion to the next meeting. What? I thought we were going to do it. They're going to discuss it for the sixth time? I'm pretty sure. No, I think, well, Chuck, I think we said we, that we kicked it over to you to write the code. It is, but it was going to the lawyer, yeah. Going to the lawyer. And they said it's going to the lawyer. They just got to work out. The only thing that came up was when we said each transit lodge invitation needed a business license. Um, a couple of the members. Oh, were tra sorry. Transit. I uh, heard food truck. No, no, no. <laughs> no. Transit no. Going to that one's going to be So the only sorry. report is there was a valid discussion about somewhere like Smuggler's Cove or whatever that's called that has six units right next to each other. Should they get six business licenses? So we'll let the code writers figure out how to give them the ability to get one license for six contiguous small units. That's, that's your only, everything else they were very happy with, right? Yeah. I thought. I also, the very last thing is, is as we're trying to close the meeting, is, is um, the mayor was directed to tell us to bring food trucks to him, which I will do tomorrow. It's a very simple one page thing. So that'll go to the mayor tomorrow the next day. Um, that's the only report I have. Eleanor? No. Nope. Richard? Well, the city council also. Okay. Um, do we have a motion to excuse Brian? I don't. By the by, the handbook we can't excuse him. We have to put the excuse us. Okay, that's fine. Then there is no excuse. He didn't inform anybody. He didn't didn't inform me. Didn't inform me. So okay, I tried to call him here to finish all the things. Okay, that's it. So before we go, I really screwed Commissioner Wills by making him do back to back. So that's okay. Um, does anybody know if Pat will be here next meeting? He intends to, what I heard him say on Friday is, is he reminded that he was not going to be here today. Uh, so I fully expect him to be here the next meeting. I will send him an email to confirm that he is the secretary for the next meeting. 
And if he's not, it will be you, Thor, and I'll send you an email. This is Friday or? No, this is, this is the, the, uh, the 9th of August. Okay. And I, I missed something when, I, when it was my turn. I'm, at the 20, I'm sorry, the 26th. 26th of July. So what's, what's the date of the next meeting? The date of the next meeting is July 22nd, 2022, at this location. So I missed something when it was my turn at bat. And what I missed is, is I was looking at the uh, uh, minutes template uh, and my copy of it, I still was listing Oyhut Bay as a meeting place. So I, I updated that and emailed to Gary if you want a copy of it. Contact Gary, Gary can email you out. We updated the yeah, I'll send that out. template. Yeah. I've got that. We still have a hearing on Friday night. No, we don't have a hearing on it. We're done. That was last Friday. Because, well, that's not our public hearing at City Council, right? No, no uh, I have. CUT. I have conditional use hearings uh, on Friday. Yeah. Yeah. We don't have to be here. Not for us. No. Thank you for you. Yeah, yeah, if you want, open the public. Yeah. That's it. Any other business? Do we have a motion to adjourn? So move. Second. So we are in adjournment.